Hey guys, it's me. I haven't posted a video in a while because my new year started with my exams, which was not ideal for making videos. Then my arm had a serious injury, so I had to heal from that. But now I'm back, so hi, you know. My mom was going on one of her expeditions or trips or whatever and she offered me if I wanted to tag along with her and uh, I said yeah sure why not I don't really do much at home <laughs> so this video is like those light-hearted uh, vlog style videos so I hope you enjoy what I'm going with and just enjoy the video oh. I left my uh, camera to charge and uh, ate one singular cookie, which is gonna fuel my entire 24 hours. I couldn't resist, I still had to bring in one of my traditions right here, a yellow jacket at least. I had to bring a cap, so here's a Spider-Man cap I have. So you're probably asking, where am I actually going? Well, in the beautiful country of Malaysia, there's a city called Kuantan. It's actually one of the biggest tourist hotspots in Malaysia, jam-packed with many historical structures and cultures. First, we will travel four hours straight just to reach to Kuantan, taking a quick lunch break and then visiting the Thousand Buddha Temple. After visiting the temple, we'll reach the hotel and have a little rest. Afterwards, our tour guide, Mr. Pan, I'm joking, of course, he's a very respectful man. He would be responsible guiding us in a heritage walk around the city. A heritage walk is basically walking down and exploring a historic city or town. It was two hours of walking and interesting facts about Kuantan. Yup, two hours. After stopping by for dinner, we will visit one of Kuantan's tallest tower, Manara 188. It's similar to the KL Tower, but in my opinion, more directed to tourists. That will be the end of day 1. Day 2, we visit one of Kuantan's oldest fishing village. We walk by what the locals call the Black Beach. We visited the natural Batik village. Lunch break, enjoyed the beautiful scenery of Teluk Champadak, and we were off home. Whoever created water is a lifesaver. I may not be a Buddhist, but I'm just here to appreciate the amount of culture that's located in this temple. This is the interior of the Thousand Buddha Temple. The walls in the temple are carved with these signs and symbols representing the Buddha and Hindu religion. We were told to remain quiet within the temple, so I did not show much commentary in the recordings. It's crazy to imagine the amount of work that was put into this temple. Oh, did I mention the outside scenery? It feels as if you're on a different world. Mr. Pan is also one of the best tour guides in Kuantan, so I couldn't shine off the opportunity to interview him. The interview itself is 3 minutes long, so I don't really want to put it in the video. I uploaded the full length interview and posted it as an unlisted video for you all to watch. Either click the link in the description below or click the annotation above. It was good fun. Now we were on our way to the hotel. Hey, this room's not bad. We got the river view. We got the word Kuantan over there. Got a parking spot. I'm all alone in this room because my mom went to go deal with some company stuff. I suppose I should eat something. With these 
can't get better than this. I said TV. Is it? Wow. Oh wait, it's on. Mom just called. I'm gonna go head down now. It's four o'clock. Time to go. I'm kind of late, so I'm gonna stop recording real quick. That was stupid. Never be late again. Our next stop was the Heritage Walk. The whole tour was about two hours, so I don't think I can fit everything in the video. As you can tell, Mr. Pan is really good at his job. But for the sake of the video, I decided to highlight the historic structures that I find interesting. I'll try not to talk too long while still giving you a bunch of facts of what I'm talking about. So this is the first structure we went to. It's one of the oldest Airbnb that Kuantan has to offer, lasting since the 20th century. These two brown buildings are just as old, lasting since the 1920s. Lastly, Kuantan's art street is one of the best destinations I went to. The graffitis and artworks is the reason why so many tourists would flock to this location. I just had to take a couple of pictures. Pictures. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's about it. Our next destination is one of the more iconic ones. I've never been to the KL Tower in Kuala Lumpur, but like right now you're looking at the Kuantan Tower behind me. The KL Tower and the Kuantan Tower both have about the exact uh, same functionality. They both are supposed to like receive satellite stuff, telecommunications and whatever. So this one will be quite an interesting experience for me. Whoa. So Kuantan 188 has three floors, the sky deck, the observation deck, and the restaurant. We will be visiting all three floors. Situated on both sides of the tower is two elevators which can hold at least 12 persons. Super idol, the showroom, don't make me the ten. Right now I'm in the observation deck of the tower and uh, to be honest, since it's night time, the binoculars are gonna be useless anyways. Personally, I'm more excited for the third floor. It's a very windy, it's a very windy place. The sky deck is one of the best spots to take photographs in Kuantan. There's really not much to talk about this place. It's just beautiful scenery after beautiful scenery. I really don't have any words to say. I forgot to mention they actually have a skywalk activity. Whoa. So this is level 2 which is actually a restaurant. Whoa. Not gonna lie, I'm actually kinda hungry. Also, if you're wondering, uh, I went to the roof. There was like a cool little restaurant up there, so yeah. My mom wants to chill with some of her colleagues, so right now I'm just heading back to my room because uh, I'm feeling kind of tired, I just want to sleep. That toast is not doing it for me. Good night. Last night was so cold. Our next destination was the old fishing village. We were unfortunately only allowed to record the outside of their factory. Mr. Pan told us they used an old fashioned style of fishing that has apparently lasted for hundreds of years. The fishes you're seeing in the video are being shined by the sunlight. I don't actually know what the process is about, but it's interesting enough. Okay, say, 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 like, like you explain the finger flow. What happened is, this place is very well known with the thing called the pung, pung, not pung, but pink buffalo, all right? The pink buffalo itself, what happened to it is actually, the buffalo is being used to tow the particular boat that come back from the sea to the shore when it is low tide. So what happened, the buffalo is actually in a grey colour, their normal natural colour, but at the end of the day, what happened is, the buffalo actually have too much of salt water, all right, contact to their body, it become pink. So at the end of the day, this is the only place where you can find the pink buffalo used to. An interesting story told by Mr. Rudy himself. Sooner or later, we were on our way to Black Beach and Mr. Pan told us something very interesting. So, when the volcanic dust 
在爆发的时候呢，它会升上很高的天空。And 同一个时候呢 ，So the beach is formed in result of volcanic ash. Is it true? Is that true? Yeah, it is. Really from volcanic ash? Yes, it is. No words. Just no words. I was speechless. This place is amazing, dude. So those are the staircase leading down to the beach. I think I kind of made a mistake by wearing my little sport shoes right here. I should have brought my sandals. It's what Jesus would do. I just don't know what to say. I'm speaking all this nonsense is because I'm just that blown away by this view, dude. My mom got this little shell right here. I'm gonna try to get a good photo of it. Nice. This is nature. This is nature. There's really not much to say. The natural beauty of life. You get me? Look at this beach. Look at the waves. Guys, I found a hermit crab. Look. It's moving. Alright, it's time to head back. Our next destination is the Batik Factory. Batik is an Indonesian technique of wax resist dyeing applied to a cloth surface. Before we go, what's yes. the best word to describe Batik? Batik? Best it's, word. Well, batik, is, uh, I would say, is the uh, abs uh, abstraction of, uh, of uh, modern art. Modern art. Okay. Abstraction of modern art. Alright, thank you. This is the natural Batik village. You're looking at the early stages of Batik. Beautiful patterns are chopped onto the cloth surface. As explained by Mr. Pan, the chops of Batik are copper products. is copper product, copper tooling. So, Copper molding, there's also a different technique where the user is manually drawing the patterns on the surface. This is where the cloth are drenched in water, then boiling the wax coated surface. According to Mr. Pan, it takes at least 80 degrees Fahrenheit to fully boil the product. The last step is to let them dry out in the sun. I might have got a lot of information wrong, hopefully I didn't, sorry if I did. This is the final product. Oh and yes, I forgot to mention about the Batek paintings. And this is the result of the manual artist. After the tour, we went to the gift shop and did a little shopping. There were so many clothes littered around the shop, each with their own individual traits and styles. I found this shirt based on the Malaysian flag and I said to myself, wow, that looks cool, so I bought it. Thank you. They give us our t-shirt in these like cute little bags. I like them. Also, there was a film crew there? I got this cool shot of the Natural Batik Village logo outside. Just like that, we were off to lunch. The restaurant we ate at just so happened to be next to the Black Beach. They served seafood, of course. It was nice. We're going for another beach walk. But not just any beach walk. We went to the Teluk Champadak. Uh, we've arrived at Teluk Champadak and wow, I am impressed with that view. So Mr. Pan said, the ocean behind me is actually connected to the South China Sea. Look at those rocks. My guy. Those rocks are pristine clean, dude. Literally. 
I'm stepping foot on the beach and oh my gosh, it's sandy. Oh yeah, this place. This is nice. I have the worst shoes right now. I'll just be here probably taking a few photos and that'll be it. This is literally the best view ever, oh my gosh. These two days were the best. It was a nice little break from school. I can't thank enough for GIT Academy and Mr. Pan for taking me along this journey. Thanks to my mom for inviting me in the first place. I hope you enjoyed this video. I had fun making it. I'm truly humble. There's no way I could put it. Like this video, subscribe for more content. Maybe share it to some friends if you really enjoyed it. Follow my other social media accounts. I'll see you next time. Thank mm -hmm. you.